For many enthusiasts, a long journey in an RV is the destination. So when you travel as far north as the Northwest Territories, the destination practically never ends given the number of scenic highways and natural attractions to experience. When visiting the country's largest territory, it's best and wise to have a detailed travel plan. And a good starting point is the Great Slave Route and the lake of the same name. Welcome to Snowbirds and RV Travelers, the weekly show for RV enthusiasts, where we talk about parks, activities, travel tips, trends, reviews, and the latest news affecting your RV experience. For more content and guest opportunities, head over to rvpodcast.com. That's rvpodcast.com. This podcast has been graciously sponsored by Soft Start RV whose innovative and reliable products let you start your RV air conditioner more quietly with a lot less power. Visit softstart.ca, that's softstart.ca, for more info, reviews, and limited time discounts. This Northwest Territories podcast was written and presented by Steve Fennell and Perry Mack. What makes the route appealing for RVers is it has unique communities to visit all along the southern portion of Great Slave Lake with destinations and rugged nature to discover along the way. The lake is also enticing. It spans over 28,000 square kilometers, ranking it the fourth largest lake in Canada and the 11th largest in the world. It even takes the top spot for being the deepest in North America, with a depth of over 600 meters. The Great Slave Route is no more than a three-hour drive if you motor straight through. It officially begins south of the lake on Highway 2 in Enterprise and ends in Fort Resolution on Highway 6. The total distance is just 184 kilometers. While there are longer designated routes, you want to take your time driving this one given the number of campgrounds and the amount of outdoor recreation. You'll know you're on the right track when you arrive in Paradise Gardens at kilometer 14. It's settled along the banks of the winding Hay River. With its rich soil and the territory's long summer days, the area is one of the largest producers of fruits and vegetables in the region. Perhaps stay a day or two. Paradise Gardens and Campground welcomes RVers all season with 15 sites, 12 of which have power. You can even sample some of the fruits of the region with the Harvest It Yourself berry picking on site. If berries are not quite in season during your visit, golfing usually is. The Hay River Golf Club, which is about 12 minutes from the campground and 10 minutes from the Hay River Town site, is known as one of the best courses north of Highway 60. The nine-hole track has a mix of par 3, 4, and 5 holes that'll test your long and short games. There's even a campground with 10 sites along the river, each one featuring power and fire pits. Hay River is where you can merge off Highway 2 to Highway 5 and continue your Great Slave Route Drive. Hay River is known as the Hub of the North and has a variety of services including gas stations, grocery stores, a pharmacy and more. There's also unique shopping at Fisherman's Wharf which sells local arts and crafts, produce and freshly caught fish. It operates every Saturday in the summer from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. One of the best ways to start your experience here is going to the Hay River Visitor Center. You can learn about Northern Lights viewing trips, expeditions along the Mackenzie River, or day fishing charters. Visitor Center staff are likely to suggest staying at Hay River Territorial Park, which fronts Great Slave Lake on Vail Island. Of the 67 campsites, 33 have power, and there's a 24-site group area. Each spot has picnic tables, a fire pit, and firewood while showers, washrooms, fresh water, and a pump-out station are some of the other amenities. One of the main draws is its expansive beach and boat launch, which serve as gateways to many water-based activities on the lake. While the water may be a little bit chilly when swimming or paddleboarding, you'll find its cool relief on hot summer days. Like most areas on Great Slave Lake, the fishing here is superb. Trout, whitefish, and walleye are popular, and northern pike are the big game here. They generally range from 5 to 15 pounds, but 25 to 30 pound monsters are common. Hiking is another popular pastime. The Great Trail System runs through the park and elevated areas provide majestic views of the lake. Other hikes include the interconnecting Rotary Nature Trail, 
Old Town Connector Trail and the Oxbow Trail. To learn about the roots of the region, drive to the village of Dene and Katladiche First Nation on the Hay River Dene Reserve, which is about 15 minutes from Hay River. The Dene Cultural Institute is a restored log and stone building that showcases Dene art and history. Just a few kilometers north, the Hay River Mission Sites was designated a National Historic Site of Canada in 1992, and tours include seeing the St. Peter's Anglican Church and St. Anne's Roman Catholic Church. There are informational panels for added insight, as well as the remains of a rectory and cemeteries containing spirit houses. To resume your journey on the Great Slave Route, merge east at the junction of Highway 5 onto Highway 6. Approximately two hours from Hay River is Little Buffalo River Crossing Territorial Park. Located on the river of the same name, Little Buffalo River feeds into the south end of Great Slave Lake and the park has 20 powered sites that can accommodate mid-sized RVs. Well maintained with power and other amenities, its secluded campground is rustic yet comfortable. Plus, fishing the river is exciting and the hiking trails allow you to see more of the region. Keep an eye out for wildlife and the many species of birds. The park is also 20 minutes from Fort Resolution, which is the final stop on the Great Slave Route. This is the oldest occupied settlement in the territory with a population of 500, and there are several attractions to see. While here, plan some time to enjoy its large embracing beach and cool off in the lake, or launch your boat to cast the afternoon away. Details about self-guided walking tours, boat excursions to Fort Resolution's original settlement, and the history of Mission Island can be found at the Community Council Office. The Northwest Territories is considered to be one of the best places in Canada to view the stunning Northern Lights. According to the Canadian Space Agency, they are most often green, but sometimes have pink and red fringes. They occur when electrons and protons collide with gases and solar winds in the Earth's upper atmosphere and produce colorful lights. Personally, I've seen them appear as amorphous clouds above me and massive shimmering curtains near the horizon. Designated tours are available, but the auroras are hard to miss no matter where you are. The peak months to view them are from mid-August to early October and December to early April. RVing this far north does take some research and planning for the best experience. And here are a few insider tips to help you with your hassle-free trip. The first one is bring spare tires, tools, and extra parts. Most of the highways are paved around Great Slave Lake, but other areas consist of gravel service roads. It's best to bring a spare tire or two for both vehicles if you're towing a trailer, some tools, and essential gear. Remember to always travel with empty waste tanks to reduce the weight and wear on your trailer or motorhome tires. Also, pack some extra parts that you feel you might need. The larger centers like Yellowknife, Hay River, Fort Smith, and Fort Simpson have automotive service stations to accommodate repairs, but it may take a few days to order specific RV or tow vehicle parts. Secondly, carry extra fuel and always fill up when you can, since some of the longer distances between gas stations can be 200 to 300 kilometers. Finally, keep a sharp eye out for roadside wildlife. Bears, bison, moose, deer, foxes, to name a few, can be seen along the highways, so be cautious and let them clear the road at their own pace. Have your camera ready at all times, but stay in your vehicle to snap those shareable moments. The Great Slave Route is just one region of the Northwest Territories. The distinctive cultural and natural attractions and the stellar outdoor recreation will keep you engaged for days or longer. Upon your return trip to Hay River, continue to the capital of Yellowknife on the north side of the lake, or take on one of the many other designated driving routes. Either way, visiting one of Canada's most northern territories will be an experience of a lifetime. Thanks for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, and if you'd like to hear more, please follow or subscribe. Your opinions are important, so please take a moment to share your ideas, comments on this show, or topics you'd like us to cover. For fun contests and picture submissions, check out our Instagram channel at Snowbirds RV Travelers. Snowbirds and RV Travelers is a Sun Cruiser Media production.